Today in our 2013 Ford F-350, we're going to review and install the B&W Gooseneck Underbed Mounted Hitch, part number BWG NRK1111. Now here's what our hitch is going to look like once installed. Let's go ahead and go through the operation. To operate the latch pin handle, we can pull out and rotate it towards the cab of the truck to hold it in the locked out position. This will allow us to drop in our ball or accessory. Then once we're ready to lock it down, we'll simply take the handle, rotate it towards the rear of the truck and release, allowing the spring tension to lock in our ball or accessory. Now looking down through the throat of our gooseneck hitch, we can see our 5 8 pin in the lock position. We pull the handle back and rotate towards the cab, it locks it out. And then you can drop in your ball mount or accessory. Here's what it'll look like as it retracts and goes back in place to lock it down. Now let's go ahead and put our new gooseneck ball in place. The gooseneck ball shank is square and pre-drilled on all four sides, so it doesn't matter which side we drop in. Throw the latch handle, locking it down, and that secures our 2 and 5 16 ball. It has a 7,500 pound vertical load limit and a 30,000 pound towing capability. Now, when we're finished using our gooseneck ball, if we want to go ahead and turn it over into the stored position. We can lock it down, and this gives us full capability to our pickup bed without anything in the way. Then to the right and left of our gooseneck ball is going to be our chain hold downs for securing our trailer when towing. In our install, we're going to start by getting a few things out of the way. Start by lowering and removing the spare tire. This will make it easier to work underneath the vehicle and get our gooseneck into position. Now with the spare tire down and out of the way, we'll go ahead and remove the two rear wheels. Next, we have two options. We can lower the exhaust or remove it. To remove it, you would take the rubber isolator off of the metal hanger, which for this application is actually missing, and then remove the two rubber isolators and three fasteners around the tailpipe flange. We're gonna go ahead and remove the tailpipe to get it out of our way and create some more working room. We'll start by lubing the rubber isolators and fasteners. Rubber isolators will slide easier off the metal hangers and to take the nuts off of the studs that secure the exhaust flange. Now with our fasteners out, we'll go ahead and pull the tailpipe back removing it from the rubber isolators. Now it may be necessary to use a pry bar or pliers to remove the rubber isolator from the metal hanger. Now in this area here, above the tailpipe, the manufacturer will install a heat shield and that'll need to be removed. For this application, it's already been removed. Now with everything out of our way, we're gonna move into the pickup bed. We need to find the center point for our hitch. Measuring from the end of the pickup bed as per the instructions and we'll make our mark. Then we'll need to find the center point of our pickup bed so we can measure from bed seam to center on both sides to find our center point. Then once you find the center point, typically using a hole saw bit, you'll drill out your large hole as per the instructions to make room for the gooseneck throat to come up through the pickup bed. Now for this application, our hole's already been drilled out so we can just go ahead and remove the cap and expose the pre-drilled hole. Next, you'll need to notch this bed seam here in order to get our rail into position. Now for this application, the bed seam has already been cut, but you'll just need to make a small V in the bed seam in order to get your rail in place. When installing the cross rails, we'll start with the rear rail first. The rear rail will have a total of three notches 
two on one side, one on the other. The oval holes that are pre-drilled into the cross rail will face the cab of the truck. The cross rail will span from one frame to the other. Now once we have the cross rail spanning both frame rails, we'll want to slide the rail back approximately four inches behind our cutout hole. I'm just going to use an open-ended wrench to help get some leverage on our rail. Note, if there's any inconsistencies in the bottom of the pickup bed, it may make it difficult to slide the rail in position. You can use a pry bar or hammer just to tap it in place if necessary. Now once we have our rear rail in place, we'll go ahead and install the front rail. Now installing the front rail, we'll basically be repeating the same process, only our oval hole will face the rear of the vehicle. Now once we get it over the shock bracket here on the passenger side, again we'll just rotate and slide it into place. Due to manufacturer tolerances and variances in the pickup bed, it may be necessary to use a pry bar or pliers to help push it over that shock bracket. Once we're over that shock bracket, we can leave our rail in position as it will attach to the center section that'll go up through the pickup bed. Next, we'll be installing the center section in between our two cross rails. To secure the center section to the cross rails, we're going to use the half inch bolt by one and a half inches long with a flat washer that will go through the cross rail, then through the pre-drilled hole in the center section and get secured on the other side with a split lock washer and nut. Now to put the center section in place, it's a good idea to get an extra set of hands to help you hold it in position while you install your fasteners. We'll install each fastener finger tight until we have them all in place. And again, we'll install our bolt and flat washer going through our cross rail, then through the center section with the split lock washer and nut to secure it. Now with the three fasteners here in the rear rail, we'll repeat the same process for our front rail. Okay, now with the center section in place, we're gonna move here to the frame rail and install our side bracket. Our side bracket will sit in between the two cross rails and get secured with the same hardware that we use from the cross rail to the center section. Our bolt and flat washer will go through the cross rail and then we'll install our split lock washer and nut. And again we're just installing our hardware finger tight this time. We're going to do that for both front and rear rail. Now with the driver's side done, I can move over to the passenger side and repeat the same process. Next, we're going to install our side bracket hardware. This hardware will secure our side bracket to the frame. We'll start with a three quarter inch bolt. On the driver's side, it will get a square washer and then go from the inside out through the frame, through the round spacer, then through the side bracket where we'll install a split lock washer and then a nut. Let's go ahead and put our hardware in place. Quick tech tip, you put a little side pressure on your split lock washer. It'll help hold the bolt in place while you install the nut. Now we have two more fasteners here for our side bracket to frame. The forward and rear attachment point. For these, we're going to have a half inch bolt going through the frame, then through the side bracket, and on the outside we'll install a flat washer, split lock washer, and then a nut. Let's go ahead and put the bolts in place.
Now we'll move over to the passenger side and repeat the same process. The only exception is one difference in our hardware. Our three quarter inch bolt will get a large flat washer instead of the square washer as it goes through the frame. Now with the main portion of our gooseneck hitch installed, we're gonna start tightening down our hardware as per the instructions. We'll start with the center section to cross rail hardware first. Once we have our fasteners tightened down, we can go ahead and torque the specifications as indicated instructions. Now with the rear rail and center section tightened and torqued to specifications, I'll go ahead and tighten and torque the front cross rail to center section. Now with the center section to cross rails tightened and torqued to specifications, we'll move here to the outside of the frame and tighten and torque the three quarter inch bolt. Once our three quarter inch bolt is tightened and torqued specifications, we'll go ahead and tighten and torque the two half inch fasteners that secure our side bracket to the frame. Now we'll tighten down our final fasteners, which is our side bracket to the cross rail. We'll go ahead and tighten and torque them. Now keep in mind that each process we do here on the driver's side gets repeated identically on the passenger side. Now with our hitch tightened and torqued the specifications, we're gonna install our latch handle. To put our handle in place, we'll just take the eyelet end, feed it through the side plate, and towards the center section. Now to secure the rod to the latch pin, we'll use the carriage bolt and lock nut. The bolt will go through the latch pin and then through the rod. Make sure that the rod is on the cab side or front side of the latch. Now we'll go ahead and secure it with our fasteners. We'll get it started finger tight and then I'll go ahead and run it down. We're gonna use the center section as a template to drill out for our chain hold downs. Chain hold downs will come down through the pickup bed, but we're gonna use the center section as our template to drill it out. I'm gonna start with a smaller pilot bit and then we'll work our way up to our final size of a half inch. Note, there are two sets on each side. One will be at the top of the bed ridge corrugation. The other will be at the bottom of the bed corrugation, like the outer holes for this application. Let's go ahead and drill them out. Now with our pilot holes here, We'll go ahead and drill down through the pickup bed and then the center section. Now once both holes are drilled out, we'll simply take our U-bolts and drop them into place. Now with the U-bolt coming down through the pickup bed in our center section, we'll install our spring and lock nut. Now we'll just install these finger tight until we have them all in place and then we can tighten them down. Now with the passenger side done, I'll repeat the same process on the driver's side. Now we, we tighten down the lock nuts, we want the lock nut to end up flush with the bottom of the U-bolt. All right, now with our hitch install complete, we'll go ahead and reinstall everything. Now, once you have the exhaust back in place, on most applications, you're gonna remove the manufacturer's exhaust hanger that'll hang in this area and secures to the tailpipe. Now, because our application doesn't have one, we'll just go ahead and talk through it. There are two fasteners that'll secure the manufacturer's exhaust bracket. Once those two fasteners are removed, 
we'll bring in our bracket extension. We've got a shim piece that'll go between the bracket and the frame as it gets bolted to the outside of the frame. Then manufacturer's exhaust hanger bracket will re-secure to our extension holding our tailpipe down and away from the center section of the hitch. Here's what our tailpipe will look like sitting in position with the manufacturer's exhaust bracket. Then once we add our extension, it'll bring the tailpipe down and create the clearance that we need between the tailpipe and the center section. Now with everything installed, we're ready to hit the road. And that'll do it for the review and install of the B&W underbed mounted gooseneck hitch part number BWG NRK 1111 on our 2013 Ford F-350.